spend the time on the resumes, you know, maybe start actively writing on Twitter, maybe do your own podcast, maybe do your own newsletter, right? Like these are the, the proof of work examples that we talk about often in Bitcoin that actually as cliche as the proof of work example is like, it's, it's meaningful. It's why Bitcoin is so different than everything else. And so I always push people to employ that too. Like just get to work, show the proof of work. Yeah, the proof is in the pudding in that way. Andy Thompson. It's our second time to uh, join together on the Compass podcast. Excited to talk Bitcoin hiring, Bitcoin recruiting, and just a real a real pleasure to have you here. For those who didn't uh, catch our first episode, it was just a month ago. I really enjoyed it. I got to ask you some very like you know direct questions about your background and how you started Bitcoin Talent Company and the resources that you bring to the space. It was a really a wonderful conversation. And at the end of that, we decided that there was more to say. That recruiting and hiring kind of goes on and on. And so there is a, there is more to say. I'm so glad that you're back, Andy. How have you been? Thank you. Uh, I've been well. I've been well. We Since our last time, we actually uh, got another chance to meet in person up in Nashville, um, out in Nashville, down Nashville, where everyone's coming from. But um, yeah, it was a great trip. And it's been yeah, a busy period since our last chat. Well, Nashville alone was was busy. We we were both at an event together. We were at Brad James's uh, Minor Mastery Club, where we co-hosted a happy hour with him and a few other groups. It was phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, did you have a good time at that uh, at that event? I, I had a great time. Yes. Uh, shout out Brad. The food was awesome. Drinks were awesome. Company was awesome. <laughs> it was uh, it was uh, it was a good time. I um, I had to throw in there too. So I'm I'm repping now. I'm a Duval County uh, native Jags fan. So I did a little voodoo on the field there. So don't hate me Titans fans, but, uh, that was my one little thing I could leave in Nashville. <laughs> well, you, you, when, when you're a, when, when you're a diehard for your team and you get a chance to cast some voodoo, I think it's <laughs> just, it's, it's smart to do that. And then what, what about Bitcoin 2024, the, the conference itself for Nashville? I think that, you know, we're both Bitcoiners, we have our own perspective, but then we're there for business purposes as well. How was the conference for you and Bitcoin Talent Co.? It, it was great. And it's actually, I mean, something you just said there made me thank you. I've, I've been going to the conference uh, as a fan of Bitcoin, I guess, to, to, to put it plainly for, for a couple of years now, and then to go um, a year and a half into this journey with Bitcoin Talent Co. on the other side of the fence, if you will, as an industry member, going to industry day, et cetera. Um, it's it's just interesting to see just my own journey, how it's how it's grown over the past several years. But this past one, I mean, let's be honest, uh, the team put a killer event together. Um, I, yeah, the, the attendees, the speakers, I mean, everything that that's, you know, how that's changed over the past couple of years, again, just my own journey from being outside of the industry into the industry, but then also the kind of uh, names and level of folks that are interested in Bitcoin and see it as something that they want to be a part of, right? Or an audience to whom they want to speak. I mean, that's, it speaks volume to, to what the team's been able to put together. So I thought that was just really, really quite impressive, actually. Um, and then for us as a business, yeah, it was, it was productive. You know, industry day was pretty much my big day on the floor. Um, we didn't have a booth ourselves, you know, so I was kind of hitting the ground, just literally booth by booth, shaking hands, catching up with folks like yourself, right? You know, friends that become more and more friends each time we meet in person, um, getting in front of folks who maybe we've had email conversations, haven't really you know, moved things forward from a business standpoint, but we're finally able to, to kind of move the needle there. So all across the board, uh, just a, a fantastic week, a busy week, tiring week, um, but mm. really productive. Yeah. Well, hindsight being 2020, I think that we wish we would have had a booth there as well. I'm primarily the decision maker on those details. And we did a couple sponsorships. We did a seat drop where we published a awesome. building on Bitcoin magazine on effective strategies for Bitcoin mining site development. And we put those on every seat at, at, on the mining stage on industry day. And I think that was well received. But then we also paid for a television billboard package that I think mm -hmm. Uh, we would have had better, you know, results if we would have had a booth. So you mentioned yeah. not having a booth. We we didn't either. I I think I'm already looking forward to Las Vegas in 2025, <laughs> and I I think a booth is is right for us next year. Are are yeah. you already looking forward to next year, or not quite yet? Uh, no plans made yet. Of course, we'll be there in some capacity. Of, of course, we will. Right. Um, I thought the Vegas choice was interesting. I don't know if it's good or bad. It was interesting just on, on the heels of Nashville being such a success and mm. the theme of coming home. You know, it's in, in their backyard, the BTC team, for the most part, they're, they're there in Nashville. So I thought there was a lot of yeah, really, really positive elements to have it being in Nashville. Um, and then I just Nashville's a great city. Right. So I, I was surprised to see it move so quickly from there. But I mean, it's Vegas. Let's be real. It's going to be a massive event. I'm sure they're going to have a lot in store. 
who knows where we'll be as an industry um, in one year's time, right? So just, uh, yeah, the, the craziness that Vegas already brings, just throw, you know, 100K Bitcoin plus on top of that and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. So. Why so bearish? 100K <laughs> next May. I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah. A little, at little least. hopium here. <laughs> at least, at least. Right? At, at yeah. least, at least. I I do hope that, like, Andy, I enjoy our conversation. You mentioned last time that you wanted to make sure it was still relevant to the audience. Mm -hmm. I think that hiring and recruiting and Bitcoin, just the people who are, you know, um, you know making things happen in the industry, I do think it's relevant conversation to bring forward. Yeah. So I, I do hope that we'll just continue the conversation around jobs and hiring. And I don't, I don't have a vision where I'm always pulling up compass jobs and talking about the opportunities that we have, nor necessarily you as well. Although I think that you have a much more unique uh, perspective. You're going to see employment opportunities across the entire mm -hmm. ecosystem where I'm really focused on mining and then specifically knowledgeable of compass. So I don't want to, I don't want to spill the beans. I want to give you a chance to share some exciting news, but I think that you have some really uh, interesting, you know, hiring opportunities that have, have come across your across your table and compass we do as well. So I want to highlight a couple of them. Maybe we'll even be able to uh, pull up our careers page, but we're, we're right now hiring for three operations um, uh, roles. One of them is a data center operator in Nebraska, one of our new facilities in Nebraska. And then the other two are in our Denver uh, service center where there's a warehouse technician as well as repair specialist. So all three of those data center operations, repair and warehouse, those are, you know, they might not, be as glossy that you would hear someone talking about at Bitcoin 2024, mm -hmm. but they are man on the street getting the work done. And a lot of times, if you're a passionate Bitcoiner and you have a background in IT or infrastructure or computer repairs, and you want to go to work in Bitcoin, these can sometimes be vibrant opportunities. So I, I'm excited about the things that Compass has on the table today. It seems like we're always uh, hiring, which is a great thing. So would you maybe be a little transparent? What are you guys up to? What are some of the exciting hiring opportunities that, that you're in front of right now, Andy? Yeah. I mean, across the board, we continue to see a lot of, um, I always make this point, diversity of hiring across technical and non-technical roles. I mean, this is true for for all of our clients, you know, engineering as well as corporate front. Specifically in the mining space, though, I guess maybe maybe more so for this audience. I'm not sure how much you want me to shill other companies outside of Compass, but um, we uh, we started to, to kick off more and more searches for mining companies. This, if you remember in our last chat, that was kind of a uh, a focus of mine, right? You know, we we really wanted, we as a business, me personally, really wanted to spend more time in the mining space, just seeing it as such a critical part of, of Bitcoin overall and seeing the, uh, you know, the opportunity for large scale hiring with, you know, more well-funded businesses. I mean, again, we, we can, you know, stay all day why why the mining industry is interesting and why there's more opportunity there, arguably, than the rest of the Bitcoin landscape. Uh, but with that said, yeah, we, we do have a few interesting roles. We've, um, we started working pretty heavily with the Satoshi Energy team. So based out of Austin, across Austin, Houston, yeah, they've got um, a lot of uh, really interesting operations kind of expanding at this point. They're hiring engineers, again, of course, so more with uh, within the HQ function, um, data-focused engineers. But then on the site side, if you will, a um, couple of roles across project development. So associate and manager mm -hmm. levels. I mean, again, just paints the picture of them as a business really starting to accelerate, really expanding their, their physical operations, if you will. Um, and so, yeah, a really exciting opportunity for the right folks on that front. Um, another one that's that's just kicking off too is, uh, I think, incredibly interesting from an executive level standpoint. So I'm not sure how much I uh, can or, or want to share yet, but there, um, there's an early stage business. Uh, it's it's built. Uh, the founding team is X, you name it, X Riot, X Marathon. You know, they, they come from some of the big boys, right? And uh, saw an opportunity to to build a business, maybe take some of the good from those areas and and kind of um, add more to it, right? So I think the pedigree, if you will, of the founding team is is super strong, and they're already looking for executive level talent to to continue their um, early successes that they've already seen right now. So um, CFO role in particular, um, anyone who's lis listening, who's interested in, you know, providing executive level finance support, um, reach out, right? So again, you know, yeah. a lot of exciting opportunities, much more so than even our, our last chat barely a month ago. Well, some fun things to tie together there. I, I think in our earlier conversation, we hit on that whatever you were doing in your old role before you discover Bitcoin, that skill set is massively needed here. So if you were in, in finance or revenue of a you know large industry and then you discover Bitcoin, those those skills and talents are, are still very much needed here. And those are some uh, exciting roles that you just shared. I, I, I think that I, I think that we should 
include in this conversation, but not necessarily pause, but we should come back to you, your question around uh, not shilling other Bitcoin mining companies. No, that is that is not the case. Bitcoin mining is a highly collaborative environment where we have to have you know high connectivity across all of our industry partners. The only thing that I would say not to shill here is shit coins, no shit coinery. <laughs> but other than that, I'm excited for you to come on talking about Satoshi Energy. In fact, uh, Andy, they're they're one of the most incredible teams that I've come across. I've said this to many people, including to Andrew himself. It's like I think Andrew might be savant level genius um, and his understanding of Bitcoin, the energy grid, as well as our entire ecosystem and what he's doing of bringing large scale renewable projects to market and making them ready for Bitcoin mining companies to put bids in through an RFP process. It's revolutionary. They've got exciting technology. I'm excited for them. And then the other opportunity you mentioned with the CFO role, um, that's also fun to hear. Obviously, there's details you can't share. Um, I, I, I have some of my own perspectives that I want to share for maybe someone who's uh, looking for a job. So you're an applicant, you want to work. And I, I've got some, uh, some mindsets there that I hope we'll get out in this conversation. But more often than not, Andy, you're interacting with the hiring organization, with the founder, with the head of people. And that's the group that you're working with. You're helping to promote and fill their role. So the question I have for you, what are hiring managers not asking you that they should be? It's a great question. I should have prepared with this one. <laughs> so, yeah, there's a couple of things I think maybe hiring managers are are optimizing for, prioritizing when they kick off a search. And and this is something that's already being, I think, um, improved over time. But let's say even six months ago, like Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Bitcoin. Yes, we want Bitcoiners, but you know, pushing back on actual Bitcoin company experience. All right. So today compared to then, I mean, we have a much different tone from uh, from founders, from hiring managers, et cetera. Uh, but there can still be some improvement there, just understanding that the right talent doesn't have to come from another Bitcoin company, right? And I mean, let's just be real, you know, to, to have that prescriptive of a scope or an archetype, right? It just, you know, it diminishes your talent pool. The Bitcoin industry is still so new. The, the companies within it, there's there's not very many, right? Um, and so to to essentially trade places with folks who are already in the industry, kind of match, make back and forth. I mean, that's that's not going to get us where we want to go. So open up the aperture to uh, not not poo-pooing on traditional worlds, if you will, like coming from traditional finance, coming from tech, coming from shitcoin companies, right? So I, I, I'll make a very strong point here that you know, shitcoiners, right, have no place in Bitcoin, but there are folks who have worked at shitcoin companies, we'll call them, right, who actually at their core are Bitcoiners. And maybe it's because they've been at a company like that that they've kind of you know, uh, developed more of a, of a conviction for Bitcoin, seeing the bad by having lived it internally, right? Um, and so the point to make is like, be more open to the backgrounds of folks. Optimize for the discipline itself, no matter where it has you know, been performed recently. And then ideally try to match that with like on the personal front, someone is a, a Bitcoiner themselves, like the ethos, their own philosophy aligns with Bitcoin. They just haven't had the opportunity or the fortune yet to work for a Bitcoin company. So again, that, that, uh, phenomenon is getting better, I would say, but it's something I definitely encountered um, far more often when we started this business to today. So I want to continue to see that that progress be made. I think there's also maybe a, a lack of like drilling into someone's motivations. You know, what do they really want? It's just, yeah, maybe it's too simple of, a, oh, you're a Bitcoiner, great, come join us. So to kind of, in a weird way, <laughs> kind of counter the point I made, I would also say that it's maybe not always enough to be a Bitcoiner, right? That's like the prerequisite, that's the foundation, right? Um, but no longer is being early to Bitcoin or being able to you know, wax eloquently about Bitcoin, your understanding of all the different parts of the Bitcoin ecosystem. Like, that's great, but that's not going to get you the job. Like, we actually still need you know, very specific subject matter expertise across whatever discipline you're applying for. And so that's what we try to do is bring a little bit more rigor into the process. It's it's more than just being a Bitcoiner. It's more than just, you know, um, hitting it off you know, in a very un immeasurable way with the hiring team. Like, we really want to drill deep and like, okay, coding exercise for engineers or okay, mm -hmm. like you're a marketer, what kind of like actual incremental, you know, uh, revenue did you bring by your marketing efforts in your previous environment? So being really uh, rigorous with our interview process and selection um, criteria so that we're ultimately bringing the best talent in. That was really transparent. I think that's going to be incredibly helpful to both of those types of, you know, dynamics when, when organizations are building out their team and they're looking to hire. I do think it's pretty easy to put on, hey, we want to hire Bitcoiners. 
Um, so even expanding to think, well, do we have to, how can we open up the opportunity to, you know, a more diverse audience in order to get the best applicants? I think that's a, a, a smart and reasonable question to ask and a good of you to be uh, pressing hiring organizations into that. But then the follow up that you shared there is that being a Bitcoiner is not simply enough that just because you're you know knowledgeable, of the ecosystem doesn't mean that you're the most qualified for this position. And I, I think pressing past that is helpful as well. I, I gravitate towards hoping that there's knowledgeable Bitcoiners competing at the highest level. And there are, of course. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, of, yeah, of course. But I, I, I feel like that was valuable advice for you to share. I want to switch gears of that other, you know, to that other side of the um, hiring dynamic. And it's that person uh, uh, looking for a role. So I do want to ask about your best advice, but I want to, you know, steal some thunder and maybe get out what I think. Uh, you're, you're, the, you're the professional here. I'm the amateur. Uh, I want to get out a couple of my um, uh, biggest pieces of advice and ask for you to like maybe, you know, give some real time feedback, but then also to add your own. So I'll maybe set this up and then give you the the floor for a little bit, Andy. But when I when I hear someone talking to me that they want to work in Bitcoin, I often say uh, what you were doing before is the best value to bring. You don't have to reinvent yourself if you have a skill set. Bring that here. But then there's a couple things that I share is that if you don't have a keyword optimized resume, you're not being seen by the hiring manager. The, the hiring managers today are using an ATS, an applicant tracking system. It's a computerized uh, method of managing their inbound applicants. And that your resume is being first reviewed by a computer. And if it's not keyword optimized, it's not getting through the ATS or the applicant tracking system. And therefore, it might not be seen. So you could think you have the most compelling resume resume, but if it's not keyword optimized and able to get through an applicant tracking system, it's bringing you no value. Am I 100% right? Would you uh, cr critique my advice there, Andy? You're not wrong. So I'll say that you're not wrong. Definitely. Um, the larger the company, the more likely they have a, a you know, enterprise level applicant tracking system, right? I won't go deep into the weeds in terms of like recruiting software, if you will. Um, but in ATS, every company should have some version of that, right? It helps you organize your inbound flow, collect feedback, whatever, right? It's a CRM, right? But from a for a recruiting purpose. The AI hype has found its way into recruiting where yes, everything is AI generated in terms of like initial feedback or resume review, things like that. So there is something to be said for that. Um, but the point is still true, like on human application review too. Like you, you probably have an HR associated recruiter, sometimes a hiring manager directly, but when you have hundreds of applications, like that manual process, you still can't pull everything out. You just can't read everything. It's going to take too long. Right. And so that's where it's keyword optimization, but almost even more like the, the formatting, if you will, putting front and center the keywords that you expect to be important. Um, and so a couple points I'll make there. I mean, make the, the resume itself very specific to each job for which you're applying, right? So if this one has, you're, you want to be an engineer, let's say, right? So there's all these different engineering jobs out there. Some have this tech stack, some of that tech stack. Maybe you fill all those requirements. That's great. That opens up your, you know, your opportunities. But, you know, this resume for a, you know, go and react front stack should maybe have those two languages front center, right? Something that's Python and JavaScript, I don't know, whatever, right? Like make sure those two, even though you have all of these, right? Put those two again, front and center. So like the recruiter who's looking for maybe a, a smaller scope of, uh, of relevancy will find it quicker on your resume, right? Um, also, if you're coming from a non-Bitcoin environment, to my earlier point, like make it known that you are a Bitcoiner, like, yes, I... Yeah, but whatever you can put in your about me or even your interests, like make it clear that you are a Bitcoiner, right? If you're coming from a shitcoin company, maybe put a little you know, added asterisk or, or even a cover letter, right? To, to make the point that even though I've worked at XYZ company, um, you know, I, I want to be in Bitcoin, right? And so that will immediately mitigate that initial flag that could be raised by like, oh, why is this person coming from that company into Bitcoin? Oh, it's because they adamantly want to work in Bitcoin, right? And so all of those things, I mean, we could go on like more case by case examples, but, um, but yeah, optimizing your resume, not just for, you know, not just for the industry, but for each individual company. And you could actually talk about like you know, mining versus you know, a wallet or exchange. I mean, we could go further and further down this, but optimizing your resume, simplifying it so that exactly what the recruiter is looking for with their job description is seen on your resume. Well, that certainly is strong advice. Uh, tailoring your resume for the exact opportunity that you're applying for, mm -hmm. as opposed to having a blanket resume that you send to a variety of candidates is or a variety of um, companies is more likely going to generate a better result. I, sure. 
I feel like I kind of gave us like a bucket to talk from. I talked about the keyword optimized resume and the applicant tracking system. And so you gave good advice there. But would you maybe step away from the bucket that I put us in uh, and speak to, you know, today to that person? They are looking for a role in Bitcoin, Bitcoin mining. What what are some key pieces of advice that you offer job seekers today? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so a couple areas that I'll put it into. The, the first point to make is, though, I mean, the more that you put them in, put into the process, the more you'll get out of it, right? And it's not a direct correlation. You know, the, the hardest working applicant is not going to always get the best job. I mean, at the end of the day, it has to be a, a skill set, it has to be culture fit, all those things, right? There is a limiting factor in that way. Um, but putting more into it will not serve you, um, will not, yeah, will not hinder you in any way, right? And so that's where, again, optimizing job by job. Yeah, it's going to take some time to put five, 10, 15 resumes, unique resumes together, but it will help you, right, for each of those jobs for which you're applying. Uh, to bring that back, though, just to kind of kind of give the blanket advice across the board, I was kind of putting this into words for the first time yesterday, actually. But, you know, it's it's these like three steps. It's like look internally first, then look externally and then get to work. It was like the three buckets. Right. So look internally really is um, how immediately translatable is my skill set to Bitcoin? In some some cases, this is like I mean, step one is just you blink and it's over. I'm an engineer with this tech stack. I've been a Bitcoiner for 10 years. I just really want to finally work at a Bitcoin company. Like that might be a pretty easy translation, right? You just find whatever companies are using that tech stack, you apply, boom, you're going to get an interview most likely. Um, for some folks, that's not as easy, right? Let's say you actually are maybe looking at a career change, right? Or a skill set change, or, or you're an entry level person who doesn't think that their other entry level work is relevant. So this is where, I mean, just whatever examples off the top of my mind. Um, actually, we use the military, right? This is a massive um, um, talent pool that we think about quite often in the Bitcoin landscape. Um, this is true for Bitcoin and other industries, but someone's leaving their role in the military. It's like, oh, you know, I, uh, you know, I was uh, out in uh, theater of war, you know, like what? Are, I'm not shooting guns at this place. Like what, what's going to be, you know, how's that translatable? Um, and actually... There could be a lot. You know, you led teams, mm -hmm. you managed to goals, you responsible for budgets. Um, as I'm saying this, I'm, I'm borrowing a lot of this actually from, um, uh, I was on a podcast with Anthony Compliano and he shared a lot of this and he speaks of his military record often. And uh, I thought that was pretty interesting advice that he gave. So there's something to be said for that, you know, certainly in that military example, but for many others too. It's like, okay, you did office work or, you know, you were a, a, a warehouse associate, like, okay, maybe in this environment, you're not packing boxes and shipping them out. But again, were you uh, re responsible for certain budgets? Were you responsible for certain team members? Were you responsible for deadlines? Like all these things you could just parse out, pull out different qualifications you had that were successful in that job or led to success in that job and say, okay, well, how can maybe not the output, how can not the the end you know, responsibility be translatable, but how can the skills that I gained and the skills that I employed in that place, how can those be translatable? And maybe that's a, a process you can go through working with someone like us, you know, or, or, another career counselor, if you will, to identify those like less obvious skills that you have. Um, but that's step one of looking internally. Then look externally. It's like, okay, well, who's hiring for these things? This is where networking also comes in. This is a big part of looking externally. Um, mm. I mean, goodness, like go into these meetups, go into the conferences, um, reaching out directly to hiring managers on social media. I mean, take that, you know, take that kind of initiative to not just be behind a resume in an ATS, you know, to the extent that you are literally just sending papers out to people like that's not going to serve you well right so take that next step to really reach out really kind of build a presence for yourself it's it's always going to do you know uh, it's always going to pay dividends right um throughout this process i would say like seek to add value to folks too like never reach out just asking 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 like if you are genuinely trying to find ways to contribute hey i'll work for free i'll come like support you in this event i mean there's all kinds of ways that you can offer value to the community at large that ultimately will pay dividends um so yeah so you can look internally look externally and then and then get to work this is like the proof of work piece so it kind of ties into the the look externally um but spend the time on the resumes you know maybe start actively writing on twitter maybe do your own podcast maybe do your own newsletter right like these are the the proof of work examples that we talk about often in bitcoin that actually as cliche as the proof of work example is like it's it's meaningful it's why bitcoin is so different than everything else it's also why you as an individual will improve your life, proof of work, whether it's in the job search or any, you know, corner of your of your personal life, right? And so I always push people to employ that too. Like just get to work, show the proof of work. Yeah, the proof is in the pudding in that way. For me, the best podcasts are ones that I'm compelled to go back to and listen and take notes again. And everything that you just shared there, I feel like is noteworthy. <laughs> I think that we could turn this into a, into a short blog post. Andy's uh 
you know, uh, key recommendations for working in Bitcoin. You said you said several things there that I'd like to try to, you know, spend um, a couple extra minutes, you know, unpacking. You spoke about that engineer who has that that skill set where, you know, it's they, they know how to code in this language and they look for groups that are doing that. And that's pretty straightforward. That that mindset, Andy, of looking for groups who are doing the work that you like and then going after them is another piece of advice that, that I try to offer people is to not just go to a job board and scan for who's hiring. Maybe you can use that to evaluate the ecosystem, but I yes. would identify the work that you want to do, where you think you bring the most value, and then the groups that you'd like to work with and go get in their ear before a job hits a job board. hundred uh, percent. That's absolutely something you should be doing. Um, very well said. Part of the, the get to work piece, right? Or, or part of the looking externally, just networking, networking, find the communities, find the companies, find the the talking heads on Twitter. You're like, I don't know, right? But but just start connecting with folks who align with what you're trying to do, right? Um, huge, hugely valuable uh, element to this, yeah. You you mentioned being on a podcast with uh, with Pomp. Of course, I got a picture of him on the wall behind me. I'm a, um, he was a, a major influence of mine when I was coming into Bitcoin. I try. I've been been I've I've been lucky to meet a lot of Bitcoin famous people, and I rarely uh, take any any photos or selfies. But if you were on my wall before <laughs> I got into Bitcoin, I'm taking that. That, that selfie. So Pomp, Pomp's contributed a lot to the Bitcoin yeah. mining ecosystem. Absolutely. But you, you, were, you were mentioning um, like the warehouse technician and it made me think of something. So the a guy on the other end of my wall there, Naval, um, Naval Ravnikant taught me something, Andy, that there's um, uh, people will climb to the top of the mountain. So they are successful in whatever field they're in, but they climb to the top of the mountain and they look over there and there's another mountain across the valley, but no one ever wants to climb back down the mountain and start over and start to climb and make a new journey. So they get into a position where they're stuck. They just don't want to go back down in order to climb over. That was a concept that I first learned from Naval. I really feel like I had to embody that myself. I needed to be willing to give up the career and the advantages I had in my prior role and to start over in any way I could working in Bitcoin. And then after doing that, my talents and abilities eventually caught up with my roles and responsibilities. Mm -hmm. I'll give you another example right here at Compass, our head of mining operations, a civil engineer. He's been running data centers for 20 plus years, significant experience, could have done anything that he wanted in the world of data centers, but he found Bitcoin. He wanted to work in Bitcoin and he started as basically an entry level position in a data center operation, he really didn't give the experience that he had. And now he quickly rose and is in charge of all those operations. And any feedback for that mindset or uh, about the ability to redeploy yourself in a different type of role? Yeah. I, yes. I've made this point that's very similar to that in a couple. Um, I, I've, I gave a talk in Nashville at uh, Bitcoin Park last year that had a lot of this content. And it was basically like, uh, yeah, I didn't make this up. It's it's been said before, but think of your career as a um, as a jungle gym as opposed to like a ladder, right? And so the the mountain is a very extreme example. Climbing, you know, scaling all that that way all the way down to do it again. Um, there's maybe opportunities for that kind of philosophy on a on a smaller scale all throughout your career too. Like maybe sidestepping or maybe going down to go further. You know, one step back for two four to flip that cliche, right? I mean, this this is something that can be true, you know, throughout your career in, in any industry, right? But certainly as you're thinking of pivoting from whatever you've done before into Bitcoin, and so. Um, don't don't hesitate from doing that. Don't think that any perceived lateral or step back is detrimental to your career. I mean, if it's getting to you, getting you towards your north star of being in Bitcoin, then then that's actually a success, right? And so, I think that that is that's definitely something to to note. You know, maybe a more tactical example of that is um, well, I keep using engineers, but like an engineer who's like a full stack developer, right? But all the opportunities for some reason are you know, more back end and or front end, right? So you can do more than that. But this job is with a company that you love. Maybe just take, you know, take one of the jobs that only uses half of your skill set for now. Once you're there, you have the opportunity to continue to expand, offer more value above and beyond your job description. That kind of work also leads to promotions faster, right? So it's like, just get the foot in the door, right? And then kind of continue to scale from there. So a hugely valuable point for sure. Um, now you see a lot of like, you know, later career uh, folks who are going through that first, like look internally piece where maybe the job itself that they've spent 10, 20 years even, right, isn't relevant. But the skill sets are, then, then yeah, they're going to have to start lower on the totem pole, if you will, in a new environment. But again, if the North Star is getting in Bitcoin, then like, is that worth it to you? Everyone has to make that decision individually, but but that may be something you have to have to recognize. Now we can take that further too. I mean, you know, coming to Bitcoin 
almost always means going to a startup, right? I mean, it's it's just sure. Bitcoin itself. You have 14, 15 years, whatever. All the companies are inherently at their earliest stages of growth. Very few have been around for two, three plus cycles. So, so the majority of companies have really been around just since the last bull run, right? And so, yeah, I mean, they're five, 10, maybe 20 person companies at most. Like if you're coming from traditional finance, thousands plus you know, employees kind of thing, that's a very different environment. So this is where like, the compensation, you know, flexibility starts to come in. I mean, I, I, I do raise this point with candidates, especially ones that are coming from an, a, an environment where I expect it to be a more traditional and high compensated environment, right? Where you may have to be a little flexible, if, if not from total comp, then certainly from a liquidity standpoint, right? To be able to lean into a startup that offers equity in lieu of cash, that kind of thing, right? Um, you know, I've talked a lot about my, my Uber experience as an employee at Uber 10 plus years ago now, like when it was actually still a startup too. And we had this weird perverted like, pride of always having people take less money to come to Uber from wherever they were before. And so, yeah, I, I, I think it's not to do that to like disadvantage someone on purpose. And at Uber, again, it was, it was weird the way we did it. Like you should want to come to Uber because it was the best company in the world. And you're at Google, well, you know, you're going to make half coming here, but you're going to change the world kind of thing. Like whatever, that didn't play out the way we thought it would. But, but to Bitcoin, it's like, it's just the truth that you just have to accept the fact that like, listen, these companies are at the early stages of, of their journey. Um, funding is just now starting to increase in, in the Bitcoin environment, right? But but previously, like they weren't even usually well-funded companies, right? So there are very mm. serious limitations to offering what you had experienced in your previous environment compared to coming to this side of the fence. And again, if your North Star is Bitcoin, you need to start having that conversation with yourself around like, okay, well, can I can I make sacrifices? Can I take a little bit of a step back in compensation to be able to get to the right role? Andy, this is such an important conversation and you discuss it with such eloquence. It demonstrates your expertise in this area. And I'm so thankful that we're bringing these types of conversations forward. I, I know that we've been uh, hinting and thinking about the opportunity of making this recurring. So because I'm like, I'm a marketer by nature, I, I try to look, well, what, we, what would we call this? And I like calling this breaking into Bitcoin. And I wondered if you had any, any feedback. How does breaking into Bitcoin as a title for our uh, our, our recurring series here? I, I still think of myself as, as still just the guest, right? On on your uh, your show. I will let you um, you know name name it what you want, but I love it. I'm for it. Yes. <laughs> Well, then, uh, it, it, then under that context, I think I have what is great news is that um, I believe that we're going to have a, a, a co-host, a co a co guest next month. John nice. Rodriguez from Foundry, who yeah. leads all of their talent acquisition, yeah. is interested in joining us in this conversation just to chop it up about hiring and and I, they they are also always doing hiring. Certainly want to give him an opportunity to showcase what what they're recruiting for, but a real knowledgeable industry professional. He's in charge of hiring or one of Bitcoin's biggest brands. So mm -hmm. the opportunity to expand this conversation, but with, with your grace, uh, I'm going to, I'm going <laughs> to stamp it, uh, breaking into Bitcoin and, and plan to schedule you to, you to come back. I, I think we're at a spot where we're okay to, to, to wrap here. You said several things that I hope we can continue to unpack and in, in further conversations. Like for example, you let out about career counseling. And mm -hmm. I think that maybe that's why I gravitate to you so much is that you have a heart of a counselor. Mm -hmm. You're very, you're very good at, at sharing information. So there's still layers of Andy to learn, but I've gotten good at memorizing your website. So it's bitcointalent.co. And obviously that's where people should go to learn more about you and your organization. But beyond that website, where do we send this audience to look at your opportunities, to look at engaging with you for your placement services? How does this audience get in touch with you, Andy? Yeah, so I mean, all, all starting there at the website, again, bitcointalent.co. Um, the job board, it's easy to navigate to, you know, kind of top right, um, you know, call to action there, the, the job board itself. Um, you'll also see up there, and I, I would definitely throw this out to everyone, um, the opportunity to sign up for our platform. So putting information, registering the kinds of roles you're looking for, that kind of thing. Um, obviously, it's helpful for us just to have your information top of mind for, for clients who come to us to run searches. Um, but increasingly so, I want to start offering that um, that that growing kind of pipeline of folks for companies, actually in a self-serve manner to look for folks directly, right? And so even if we're not interacting with you um, in the near future, hopefully, you know, companies can actually reach out directly to folks who have put their information in our system. So, you know, bottom line, absolutely should have your your, your name, your resume, um, just a couple you know, data points on you uh, logged in there. Um, if you want to reach out to me personally, I mean, I'll always just throw out my email directly. Yeah, Andy, Andy at BitcoinTalent.com. So always shoot me a note. Happy to connect with folks who have questions, you know, curious of how to break into the industry. Um, obviously on the client side, yeah, if you're curious, it, 
Yeah, we want you want help even scoping a role before even running a search. Like any point of the hiring, you know, journey, if you will, where you have questions and feel like you could use support, we're we're definitely here to help you on that front too. That's very innovative. Um, the platform that you're building on your job board, where applicants can, you know, include their information, and regardless of whether the hiring company is contracting with you, you're mm -hmm. providing, you know, just transparency in that. That's very innovative. And I'll say this from my perspective. Um, thinking of folks who are filling roles, um, engaging with you early in the process and just learning what's it take to work with someone with your experience and the amount of reach that you have in the industry, even if it's not an exact fit at that time, I think that learning about the process and opening themselves up to the opportunity to work with you is is very is very valuable. So I would encourage that. Uh, a last question and then I'll, I'll wrap is where, Andy, where do you listen or watch podcasts at? What's your go-to, you know, app or platform for in, you know listening to content like this? Oh, interesting question. Um, I mean, I use Fountain. Uh, sometimes I, I'll still just use regular old Apple podcasts. Um, not so much of a sit and watch a video type. So YouTube is great. Obviously, a ton of value there. I just, I frankly don't have the time for that. So I'm usually like, you know, listening to it on audio, listening to podcasts on audio while I'm out for a walk or, you know, doing chores around the house kind of thing, right? Uh, but yeah, I mean, those two platforms really kind of accomplished it all for us. Love it. Well, if you're if you're on Fountain or if you're on Apple, look for that subscribe button. You will find more content from Compass Mining and now a recurring piece with Andy as we look deeper into recruiting and hiring in Bitcoin. We're going to call it breaking into Bitcoin. Andy, it was a pleasure to see you again. I look forward to the next time we get a chat. Thank you, Curtis.